Halloween has to be my favorite time of the year. When I was a kid growing up, we didn't celebrate it very much, but now that I'm an adult, I love my Halloween dessert tables to be completely over the top. I think the thing that I love most about it is that every other party you plan for kind of has to have that element of dainty and pretty and sweet, but with Halloween, you can go all out gruesome and you can get away with it. dessert table can be really fun to plan, but I feel like people sometimes get pigeonholed into candy corn and orange because of the pumpkin element. I want to show you how to do a really classy take on a Halloween dessert table. We're going to go with a white and a black theme with kind of hints of green to make it a little bit different. One thing I want to pay particular attention to here is the gruesome backdrop. I've printed out some photos, but if you know someone's coming to your party and they're deathly afraid of clowns or crows, it's kind of your opportunity to sneak one in and see if you can't get a good reaction. So I'm going to be showing you how to make some cauldron cupcakes. We're going to be doing a DIY chalkboard pumpkin, which gets us away from that traditional orange and it's really, really easy and doesn't take as much time as carving. And I'm going to show you how to style up some beautiful white roses so they're not so beautiful. They're going to be kind of creepy and spider infested. Now in Australia, we don't have the huge, big orange pumpkins that I've seen in America and around the rest of the world. So we're generally at the mercy of kind of a smaller and a very, very tough pumpkin. I don't know if you guys have as much trouble carving pumpkins as I do, but mine never look like a jack-o'-lantern. And to be honest, they kind of look like pumpkin soup. So for my pumpkin element, I still definitely want it on the table. I want to eliminate the orange. So I've taken a pumpkin and I've painted it in chalkboard paint. This not only gives us a pumpkin that we can actually eat after the fact, but it also gives us a really cool centerpiece. So I just used some actual chalk to paint on spooky sweets. You could paint Happy Halloween. You could paint the Addams Family, whatever you like. But that's really the centerpiece. Lifting it up nice and high off the table really makes it kind of come into one with that backdrop. The other element about this table that I am super spooked out by, and I know my guests are gonna love, is that little protruding doll hand mirror. So for me, there would be nothing worse than standing in the mirror, doing my makeup and seeing something come out of it. And that's kind of where this idea came from. To make that, all I did was take a little bit of paint, sort of brush it over an old mirror and just glue the two doll hands straight down to the mirror using a little bit of hot glue. By popping that one in the center of our wall display, not only are you bringing it kind of out onto the dessert table and bringing the backdrop and the table together, you're also adding an utterly terrifying element and I guarantee you're gonna get comments on it. generally all about the candy, but when it comes to my kids, it's all about baking for some reason. I think they kind of know the candy's gonna be there regardless, so if there's an opportunity to get in the kitchen and make something else, it's an extra treat. So, for today's Halloween party, I'm gonna be making some really cute little cauldron cupcakes, but I want them to be easy enough that I'm not gonna be a slave to the kitchen all day and that the kids can help. For my cupcakes, I'm gonna cheat a little. I just grabbed some of these little plastic cauldrons. They're really widely available around Halloween and they're the perfect size to pop in a mini cupcake. Don't stop at the mini cupcake though, because there's a little bit of room at the bottom to stuff in a little bit of candy. That way this becomes a take home favor. A little bit of candy and a cupcake popped on top. I'm using a green mint velvet cupcake because I kind of wanted it to match with the green theme of my dessert table and also with the kind of green bubbling broth of a witch's cauldron. So I'm gonna use a green buttercream frosting and I'm just gonna really sort of loosely pipe around the top of my cupcake. We're trapping in the cupcake, we're trapping in the candy and we're giving ourselves kind of like a nice little bubbling brew to sit on top of that cauldron. A couple of little round green candies kind of complete the look and feel free to get creative here and grab some little candy bones or some little gummy worms to really make make your cauldrons just that little bit more gruesome. Candy apples are pretty synonymous with Halloween, but if you don't wanna to go to all the trouble of boiling sugar and sorting out that candied apple extravaganza, I took some green apples and just dipped them in some chocolate with some sprinkles. The thing that I love about these guys is we used some twigs, so some sort of dead looking sticks from the garden. Make sure you wash them off first, but don't be too fussy because they're only going into the core of the apple. These kind of give us that gnarled forest look, which really kind of makes the table a little bit more spooky and it takes your little chocolate apples over the top. I also love the fact that those apples aren't gonna be too healthy because we got a little measure of chocolate on them. When I found these little science beakers, I had no idea how I was gonna use them, but I knew that they were gonna make an appearance at my Halloween table. I opted for some easy instant pudding to save on time and because my son loves it, with a couple more of those little round candy balls on top.
With any Halloween party, it's the styling that truly brings the event to life and we've got a lot of room to have fun here. So as well as the backdrop, and you can choose however many pictures you want, you can add in photos of the family that you've spookified or those fun touches that you know your guests are gonna love. I've also come up with some great bouquets. Instead of being a traditionally beautiful white rose bouquet, I've gone for a tall black vase and then I've added in some spider webs and some spiders. For me, I'm petrified of spiders and that is a spooky bouquet right there. For my candy jars, rather than just putting the candy straight into the jars, I've layered sort of variations of green and black and white and added in some broken up skeleton bones just so they get a little spooky surprise as they get through those jars. For my smaller jars, I've gone with some beautiful little potion bottles. I don't know about you guys, but at a Halloween party, I always wanna pick something up and walk around with it and I love it if it teams with the theme of my outfit. So for me, I'm gonna be carrying one of those around all night just because the photos are gonna look fabulous. When you're looking for your jars and your bouquets, you really wanna go for height so that you can bring your backdrop and your table together and make it one big spooky experience. And if you want to provide some sort of walkable snacks, we've got some gorgeous little black Chinese soup spoons with hors d'oeuvres on them so people can wander around and eat on the go. When it comes to Halloween, I will literally shop all year trying to find the coolest and gruesomest things that I can add to that table. And I have a Halloween box, which is a little unusual for someone from Australia.